how to actually fund the barbell. All right, so remember the bar, let me bring it over here actually. Let me go, follow me my friends. Remember the barbell is we have four years of cash. There we go. So I was just talking to these guys today and he, a lot of people actually ask me this question. All right, there we go. I'm getting the board here. Oh, sweet. Yes, I am wearing the same shirt I wore yesterday. How dare me? I am doing a new t-shirt on and I do have new underwear on too. So you're lucky you don't have to smell that. But uh, see that right there? See what this, that says? Decoding dyslexia. All right. Gil, Orton Gillingham's way to do it. All right, so how to actually fund the barbell. All right, so I'm going to show you here. Hopefully this. So we got a guy. He's got a, we'll just say a million dollars. Let me pause real quick. All right, so we got a guy with a million dollars in his 401k. It could be 500,000. It could be, you know, 50,000. Just a matter of what we're trying to do is get four years of cash in here. All right, so he's got a million bucks. He's like, man, I want to get the, I want to get the cash, but how do I do this? And he's like, so well, just, we, what we do is we take this million dollars, we roll it to an IRA. All right, so we're going to move it from a 401k to an IRA. All right, so that's what we're going to do. We got 401k, move it to an IRA. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take $250,000. and put it in the Vanguard Money Market account. In this case, it's V-U-S-X-X. -X. You got the, the Vanguard Federal Money Market and the Vanguard Government Money Market. They look pretty similar to me, so just either one, I don't care. I can't, v -E -M -X, I can't remember what the Vanguard Market is. Anyway, so we take 250 and we put it into your uh, Money Market account. It's still under the umbrella of the IRA. So they're still in the IRA. It's just you have two different holdings. One's the money market and one, and this was the 2020 target fund because he's a pretty conservative investor. So it's perfect. It's a perfect way to go. So what happens now if this goes, so let's say we need, you know, $75,000. All right, so we need 75,000 bucks. That's four years right there, right? It's 150, that's three and a half years, something like that. Anyway, just for simplicity, say we need $75,000. If this guy is up, let me just write. I, I wish I had better handwriting. It really makes my wife mad. Trust me, pretty much my breathing makes my wife mad. You know what I'm saying? Your wife gets mad a lot. Yeah, just waking up in the middle of the day, my wife gets mad. How dare you? I'm just joking, my friends. Relax. All right, so we need 75000 bucks. So we start by here. If this guy is up, well, we pull it from here. If this guy is down, we pull it from here. Just that simple, man. So what his issue was that he, he came to the conclusion. Am I even on? the? Yeah. He came to the conclusion. The reason he was having a hard time figuring out how do we fund the barbell inside his 401k? Because his 401k didn't have a money market. I, I don't, it's like crazy. Uh, funds that don't have a money market in a 401k. What you could have used instead is a short-term bond fund. All right, so imagine your, one, of your, one of your options in your 401k will be a short-term bond fund. And I mean literally a short-term bond fund. We're not talking intermediate bonds. We're not talking long bonds. We're talking short-term. And I want not just investment grade. If we have a short-term government bond fund is what we're looking at if we don't have a money market in our 401k. And so that you'd want to look, say, okay, I have a, uh, a stable value fund. Stable value funds aren't very attractive right now. I have a... Um, a guaranteed investment contract, not very attractive right now. Uh, the only thing in our 401k would be a stable value or a, a guaranteed investment contract or a short-term bond fund. And again, a short-term bond fund is fine as long as it's highly rated, i.e. government bond funds. If not, then you're going to want to roll it to an IRA um, so you have access to money market accounts. Like this guy's going to roll his for million bucks in there, 250 will go into the cash, 750 will go into bonds or go into uh, the 2020 fund. You can even put $300,000 in here. He doesn't need to do it because his wife's pretty much going to do the same thing as what we're talking about here. So, and again, even if you only had uh, 500, well, I don't have this kind of scratch. I'm just FYI. I'm just, look, I'm just a caveman. I don't have a million bucks. Well, it's just the, the point being is it, it's all contingent on how much you spend. So if you're spending 60,000 a year, 
Now, not so. I, let me back that up. It's not how much you spend; it's how much you need from your portfolio. So, in this guy's case, he was needed about seventy-five thousand between he and his wife from his portfolio. That was everything to include the income taxes they have to pay. So, let's just say they spend one fifty. Uh, they get 150 coming in. They, so they spend 150. They get 100,000 coming in from Social Security pensions, whatnot. Just using, literally, I'm just using this for example. It's not applicable. So they have $50,000 deficit. So they need $50,000 in which to pull from their portfolio. But that $50,000 they got pulled from their portfolio, i.e., their IRA, is going to be taxed. So they need $60,000 for simplicity. That's how you look at it. You say, how much money? Do I got coming in? How much is going out the door? Plus taxes, how much do I need from my portfolio to cover everything? That's taxes and the net deficits I have on my spending. Does that make sense? So again, if I have 150 going out the door, I got 100,000 coming in, I got a deficit of $50,000 that I have to, I got to get from someplace. So I'm going to get it from my IRA. Well, if I pull 50000 out of my IRA, I got to pay tax on that money as well. And we're just going to say that will create $10,000 of taxes. So my $50,000, my deficit, I got to get that from my IRA, plus the $10,000 of taxes, I need $60,000 from my IRA to cover the deficit and the taxes. 60000 times 4 is $240,000. That's how much I should have in cash. In my opinion, and you could be different. And when I say cash, I'm again, I'm talking about money markets. You could have ladder CDs, uh, 60,000, yeah, 60,000 uh, for a one, two, three, four year CD, fine. You got it in, again, a small short term government bond fund. I don't care, but just we want it liquid. That way, if the markets drop, well, I don't have it up here. If the markets dropped up like a brick and water, a la 2008 or 2022. Uh, we don't have to get hammered. Now, two th that's when the drawback with short-term bonds, what happened last year. No one expected that to happen, but it did. Yeah, you survived okay. You survived okay. Short-term bonds, they, they didn't get, because their duration is so little, they didn't get hammered nearly to the extent that long-term bonds did. But no one expected that. I don't expect that to ever happen again, Frank. I could be wrong. I don't think so. But anyway, love your thoughts. Don't forget to comment down below, and we'll see you.